Good evening. This is Bronya Lucas, and it is time for Thinking Thursday. I can't wait to talk to you tonight and let you know what's going on. I can't wait. That was another little village. I am still working the math, but it's so good to be here this evening. We're going to talk about the importance of sleep. And initially, it was going to be the importance of sleep, rest, and relaxation. As I got started in this and began to really dig deep in it, we're not even going to get to rest and relaxation tonight. We're going to talk just about the importance of sleep. Now, sleep is something that many of us just don't get enough of. If you were a live audience and I took a show of hands to see how many of you are getting enough sleep? Probably it wouldn't be an overwhelming amount. It's pretty common that um, people just don't get enough sleep. And we're going to talk about that, about why we don't get enough sleep, and maybe even figure out ways to help us get a little better sleep. Because sleep is important. And we want people to get enough of it and feel better in life. So let's dig deep into this thing called sleep. But for those of you who have been here before, you know what we must do. We must take a moment to breathe and relax. So if it's your first time, let me take a moment to explain. We take the time to just breathe for several reasons. When you are breathing and taking true cleansing deep breaths, you are allowing more oxygen to flow through your body and brain, and you're allowing your body to relax. And we need that. Many of you may have had a stressful day or just a busy day. Mine wasn't so much stressful, but it was busy. It involved waking up, if you're from Texas, I live in the Dallas area. It involved driving from here to Tyler, walking around campus with my son because he's going to Tyler Junior College next year, getting all the information we needed and driving back and finishing this. And it was bam, 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 bam. It was great. It's just a two hour drive, but it's still four hours when you count there and back just in the car. But it was a good day, just a long day. And we'll see how well I do with sleep. But let's take that moment to just breathe. So if you've never done this with us before, let me tell you how we do it. I am going to count to four very slowly, a nice slow four count. And as I count to four, you're going to breathe in through your nose. As I say, breathe in. And when I say breathe out, you're going to breathe out through your mouth to the count of four. It's a slow count. And we're going to take three deep cleansing breaths. Are you ready? Let's breathe in. Two, three, four. Out. Two, three, four. In. Two, three, four. Out. Two, three, four. One more. In. Two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Hopefully you are able to take a few deep cleansing breaths and are feeling calm and relaxed as we get together and talk about sleep tonight. So let's just see, what is this thing called sleep? So first, let's just look at the definition of sleep. Um, and figure out what is it? Well, I've got a couple of definitions. If you've ever watched the show before, you know I'm big on let's define it, let's know what it is, let's give the official definitions. If it's a medical issue or mental health issue, I'm going to the source. So I looked up several definitions of sleep. One is, here's a nice wordy definition. The nervous system is relatively inactive the eyes are closed, the postural muscles are relaxed, and consciousness is practically suspended. Whoa, here's another definition. To take the rest afforded by the suspension of bodily functions and the natural suspension, complete or partial consciousness, 
or cease being awake. An internal body clock that, uh, regulates your sleep cycle, controlling when you feel tired and are ready for bed and alert. This clock operates on a 24-hour cycle known as circadian rhythm. After waking up from sleep, you'll become increasingly tired throughout the day and get ready for sleep once again. So that's a lot of definitions of sleep. Basically, it's a time when we are. We're just, our consciousness is not alert. We are not alert. We should be in a restful state. Um, and it's something we all need. But if, like I said, if I were to ask for a show of hands, how many of you out there get good sleep? I might not get a lot of hands. As a matter of fact, this topic came about because I was talking to a friend um, this weekend. It was two friends at different times. But one, we were talking and somehow sleep came up and she said, oh, how she just, once her head hits the pillow, in about 10 minutes, she's asleep. I was like, oh my gosh, I envy you. That is not me. So for some of us, sleep is hard to come by. Many people suffer from insomnia. Many people just can't de-stress and, and sleep. Um, or there, we'll talk later, there may be medical issues that interfere with your sleep. But for so many reasons, sleep can elude people. Here's one other definition. Sleep is an essential functional function that allows your body and mind to recharge, leaving you refreshed and alert when you wake up. Healthy sleep also helps the body remain healthy and stave off diseases. And we'll find out there can be healthy and not necessarily unhealthy sleep, but unbeneficial sleep. So just what are the stages of sleep? Even before we get to the stages, there's this part of the sleep cycle where we're just entering into sleep. And when you're entering sleep, that is you're relatively awake and you're alert and the brain is producing beta waves which are small and fast. And the brain begins to relax and slow down. And as this happens, and that there are slower alpha waves are being produced and we're getting ready to enter into the four stages of sleep. We have three stages of non-rapid eye movement. Now, what is that? Let's look at stage one. In stage one of the NREM, non rapid eye movement stage. Um, the body is transitioning between wakefulness and sleep. It's when your body is getting ready to go to sleep. Um, then you go into stage two, which lasts probably about 20 minutes. You become less aware of your surroundings. Your body temperature will drop. Your heart rate will become more regular. Your brain will produce bursts of rhythmic brain waves an activity known as sleep spindles. Body temperature starts to decrease and heart rate begins to slow down. Um, one, um, it says that approximately 50% of all your sleep time is in this particular cycle, in stage, because we're gonna find that we don't just get to one stage and stay. The next stage of non-REM sleep is um, stage three. And in stage three, your muscles are relaxed, your blood pressure and breathing drop. And this is where the deepest sleep occurs. This stage used to be divided into two. And so we had stage three and stage four, but now they just look at it as stage three, where the brain waves slow down and we now are meeting delta waves. And they begin to emerge during this stage. And this is sometimes even called the delta sleep. During this stage, people become less responsive to noise and activity in the environment. They may fall to, um, they fail to uh, respond to anything. You're just about to sleep, you don't hear it. Um, it's also a transitional stage between light sleep and very deep sleep. So you're just about to get to um, the next stage. This is stage for three, where it's rapid eye movement. During the REM sleep, the brain becomes more active. The body becomes more relaxed and immobilized. Dreams occur here. Uh, and this is the rapid eye movement. Once REM sleep is over, the body usually goes back to stage two and cycles through over, and or in a nighttime, you can cycle four or five times through these stages. So you may be 
in a deeper sleep and then a lighter sleep. On the average, we enter REM sleep for about 90 minutes at a time, after about 90 minutes after falling asleep. Um, the first REM cycle can last a short amount of time and the others can become longer throughout the night. As I said, we tend to cycle throughout sleep. Um, the, the, you cycle through in maybe in about one hour and a half to two hours. There are some uh, estimates that say 75 to 80% uh, of your sleep can be in the last stage. Uh, but you can wake up briefly in the night. Some people wake up briefly and go right back to sleep. Others wake up and can't get back to sleep. And some people wake up, they remember just um, staying awake during all night. I woke up at 2 a.m. and I couldn't get back to sleep until 6 a.m. and I had to be up at 6.30. Oh, what a bummer. Huh. We're gonna talk later about what might be some of the um, things that can affect your sleep. But what I wanna look at now is what happens if you don't get enough sleep? What are some of the effects of poor or not enough sleep? We call it sleep deprivation. And there are a lot of things that can happen to your body as a result. Let's look at some of the things. Did you know that not getting enough sleep can impact your weight? Yeah. Higher body weight uh, and weight gain can be a result of not sleeping enough uh, because it has to do with your, the hormones you produce um, and sleep deprivation can also disrupt our daily functions and our hormones and our appetite. It can cause poor, ap poor appetite regulation. So you're not sleeping well and the hormones in your body aren't getting, they aren't going through the cycle they need to during your sleep, so you can be impacted and it can actually impact how you eat. And if you're not eating right, you're not eating properly, weight gain just from not sleep. Another issue would be brain function. Good sleep can improve your concentration, your productivity, your cognition, and your overall performance. Think about it. When you're sleepy, you can have that brain fog. It's like, um, yeah, I need. Um, I was thinking, I'm not gonna hold it. Oh, I just was sleeping. You know, and you're you're in that zone. You don't think. So if you're sleepy and tired and can't think clearly, um, it's hard to concentrate because you're just like, um, what was what was I doing? Um, oh yeah, oh I just need to get a little sleep. When you're in that stage, so when you can't concentrate, that's definitely going to impact your productivity. Because how is it possible to put out everything you need to do quick, fast, and in a hurry if you can't focus and concentrate? It impacts your cognition because you just can't think clearly. Um, and if all that's impacted, your overall performance, be it on the job, be it around the house, but whatever you're doing, your overall performance will be impacted. Even short sleep can ne negatively impact some impact in aspects of brain functions. When you don't get enough sleep, it is as if you're intoxicated. So thinking about your brain functioning. So when you're totally sleep deprived, it is not the time to get behind the wheel of a car. Studies have shown and the experiments have been done to show that extreme sleep deprivation um, mimics someone being uh, under the influence of alcohol when you're driving. Your, your reflexes are slower, your ability to, uh, like I say, your cognitive functions are uh, impaired. So you just can't function all because of sleep. Physical ability. It has been uh, said and studies have shown that longer sleep has been, has been um, shown to improve at, uh, functions of athletes, their overall performance. And when athletes get enough sleep, they are able to function better. Going back a minute to brain function, one interesting thing and disturbing thing that I read was there was a study looking at um, interns, medical interns, and they had two groups and one group 
was a typical intern, you know, doing those 24 hour shifts, working hard. And the other group, um, they were, uh, they got sleep. They purposed to make sure this group of interns got adequate sleep. And you know what they found? That the group of interns that got adequate sleep had 39% fewer um, mistakes than the group that did not get sleep. Now, the reason I say that is so impactful is when you think about it, if you're a medical intern, your mistakes could cost someone their life. And that just stuck with me when I read it. I was like, wow, that is pretty deep. Um, but as we look at it, yeah, we realize that sleep is so important. And as I said, it can totally impact your brain function. It can affect your brain function and your just physical ability. And think about it. If you were one to go out and work out when you're, um, I, before COVID, I had started working out three days a week, um, you know, going to a small owned, personally owned gym. And I was getting there and I was, you know, pretty dedicated. Then COVID hit, gym shut down. But I do know when I, um, I could sleep better in the evening and I was more physically alert, more mentally alert. So that physical ability has, it's a whole nother topic. It has so much positive to do with our lives and our overall function. But what about our heart? Did you know that the amount of sleep you get, if you're getting accurate, adequate sleep can impact your heart? Poor sleepers have a greater risk of heart disease and stroke. And that one blew me away because I'm a poor sleeper. Um, insomnia is linked to high blood pressure and heart disease. Over time, poor sleep can also lead to unhealthy habits that can hurt your heart. So because stress levels, and we're going to talk about stress levels, you can be less motivated to be physically active and unhealthy food choices. So all of those choices and the other things we talked about impact your heart. We talked about the weight gain can impact your heart. And if the weight gain is the result of eating improper foods or unhealthy foods impacting your heart. So you see, as I always say, you know, we're just one being. When you impact one part, you impact all of us. So how you're eating impacts your heart, impacts your blood pressure, impacts your brain function, impacts your sleep. So your sleep is now the window in which we're looking at all of this and your sleep has so many consequences in your body. Your sleep can even impact your immune function. Um, the geeky side of me likes to read different studies that I, I come across. And one study that I came across talked about um, the common cold. Now, everybody under the sound of my voice has had a common cold before. There is no doubt about it. Did you know this? This was an interesting study. These people were given the common cold through a nasal spray. Um, some were allowed to sleep. Some slept seven hours or less. Some slept eight hours or more. Those who slept eight hours or more recovered quicker and had less symptoms of a common cold. So here's a tip. If you have a cold and you know, say you need to get some rest, it is true. This, is, this study showed, and it was more than one study, that they just looked at just the common cold and looked at the immune system. So getting some sleep, you have a cold, get some sleep. It's, um, it's going to help. That's something so simple because it decreased their symptoms. Um, and as I said, they kept the cold shorter. But you know how we are, we're busy. Who has time for sleep? And we're gonna talk about that. I don't have time to sleep. That was, I'm too busy, I've got X, Y, Z going on. And you want me to sleep, really? I don't think so, even if you're sick. But when you're, you're sick, it's going to sleep really does help your body heal better. Increase inflammation in your body. What is that? Well, <clears throat> in fact, sleep loss is known to activate undesirable markers of inflammation um, and cell damage. So how? what are some diseases this might impact? Infl inflammatory bowel disease. 
uh, poor sleep can strongly be linked to long terms of inflammation in the digestive tract. So, um, and that's where the IV um, inflammatory bowel disease can come. So we're increasing infl inflammation in our body. And there are some other diseases that can be impacted um, with the inflammation. Inflammation in your body does so many things. Um, and when you're not sleeping, it's increasing. And, and that's just one of many things. Um, Crohn's disease is another that is said to be infected. That Crohn's disease, people who were sleep deprived or with who suffered from Crohn's disease were twice as likely to relapse as patients who got more sleep. So as you begin, when you look at any medical issues you may have, they can be worsened because of lack of sleep. Another impact of sleep de deprivation it impacts our social and emotional interactions. Think about it when you're tired, when you're tired and sleepy, and somebody gets on your nerves. Oh, you will talk to them in a way you might not have talked to you if you weren't tired and sleepy. Um, we can be more irritable or grumpy uh, just because we're sleepy, or I'm tired and I'm just gonna go home and go to sleep because I am not getting enough sleep, so I'm tired. So it may just limit the amount of social interactions we have simply because I'm just too tired. Or like I say, is you get on my nerves or when you're tired, remember we talked earlier about your brain functions and your ability to focus and your concentration. Well, if your ability to focus is somehow um, compromised, so, and your ability to just read social cues are compromised, you might misread somebody because you're tired. And you might misread what they're saying, what, they're, um, what they mean, and because you're a little more irritated, a little more agitated, and you're not seeing things clearly. So it's like, what, what are you, I'm just not getting it, you know? So it can totally impact how you see things and how you respond to people. All of this from lack of sleep. Some other things that can impact our sleep, alcohol. Now, a lot of people think that, uh, you know, I'm just gonna have that glass of wine, that margarita, that brandy, that whiskey, whatever, a little drink or a lot of drink before I go to sleep. Because, you know, if I drink, you know, it'll put me to sleep and I'll be good because I've got this liquor. Well, let's look at that. Alcohol can actually reduce the REM sleep, which is that deep sleep we talked about earlier. That's why I wanted you to have an understanding of those cycles. So alcohol can actually decrease our REM sleep and cause sleep disruptions. People who drink before they go to bed often experience insomnia symptoms and feel excessively sleepy the next day. You're thinking, you know, the hangover effect, but some of it is just you didn't sleep well because it, imp it impacts your sleep. You'll fall asleep, won't stay asleep as a result of the alcohol. Um, so it, this can lead to one cycle that can be um, pretty bad. I'm drinking because I'm tired. So I'll wake up in the morning and have caffeine. I'll have the caffeine to keep me awake. But it, now that I've had so much caffeine in the daytime, I need something to go to sleep. And so I drink some alcohol. Well, I've had so much alcohol that now I can't sleep. So I'll have a caffeine the next morning and you have this vicious cycle um, because you are using sleep. And last session, we talked about self-medication and alcohol is the way people self-medicate. And you can see how this choice of self-medication can definitely impact your ability to sleep. Um, alcohol has set, does have some sedative effects, sedative effects, and it can produce some relaxation and sleepiness. It just doesn't keep you asleep, and it impacts the quality of sleep. So you're just like instantly damn, knocked out. And this is the casual drinker. If you're totally intoxicated, that's another thing, and it does other things to your body. But just that nightcap of a drink doesn't really help. Um, and as I said, it can lead to other insomnia system, um, symptoms. What about caffeine? Well, some people um, 
Caffeine, like anything else, has its good and bad qualities. Anything in moderation can be okay, even your alcohol. But caffeine reduces the time of slow wave sleep, which is a stage of deep sleep a restful sleep, that REM sleep that we've been talking about. And it can, that leaves us feeling refreshed and alert. Caffeine can disrupt that system. Um, you know, we use caffeine to stay awake. And for some people, they're like, I can take a drink, a cup of coffee and go right to sleep. It doesn't bother me. For others, um, caffeine can give you this burst of energy and it stimulates the nervous system and you drink that coffee in the morning. Oh, I feel good. I had that coffee. I can go and I can charge the day, but got to have a cup of coffee to do that. Well, where it is, it can give you that boost. Um, it can also leave you feeling fatigued and it doesn't really ward off sleep and it can, it can ward off sleep in the long run. So it's, it's not a healthy balance if you're drinking too much. Moderate amount of caffeine have lots of physical benefits, but if you're drinking four or five cups a day to stay awake, you're going to lose the, the positive effects because it can cause your sleepiness, uh, can impact your sleep cycle. Um, and some people, when you first, it's like you realize, yeah, I'm drinking six cups of coffee a day. I'm gonna go cold turkey and not drink any. That can really impact your sleep cycle too because your body doesn't know what to do with that. Um, so caffeine in moderation, great. Too much of it, it will impact your sleep cycle in a very negative way. So yes, monitor that caffeine. Now let's look at mental status. By that, I mean our stress, our anxiety, and our depression. You know, this show is all about mental wellness and it's the belief here that everything impacts our mental wellness. So where does sleep fit with our mental wellness? Earlier, we talked just about our mood and we can be more grumpy, we just don't feel good, but there are some other things that can impact it. Um, if you're a person who suffers from depression, sleep can be an impact. It's estimated that about nine estimated that about 90% of people with depression complain about the quality of their sleep. So maybe they're sleeping, but it's not good sleep. What do I mean by not good sleep? I go to sleep and I wake up or I toss and turn all night. Um, I heard someone say, I can wake up in the morning and my mate will tell me, oh, you were asleep. And I feel like I was awake all night. I was dreaming, I was awake. So it can totally impact your sleep. Now there, um, as I said, it can impact, it can also impact your immune system. And so if your immune system is becoming compromised because of sleep, that can also lead to depression. What about stress? Oh. When, so many things make us stress, and we've been talking about stress, your financial situation, your emotional situation, your spiritual situation, your work-home life imbalance, dealing with children, dealing with family, dealing with in-laws, dealing with neighbors, life, COVID, being Black in America, all of those and more can cause extreme stress. Well, when we allow the stress to take over, it's hard to sleep because your brain is racing. It's just going and you're not able to sleep because it's like, I just can't do it. So that stress and that anxiety. Also, which I was talking to someone else today and about their level of stress and just things going on and reminding them, if you have a medical issue and you are stressed out, you're going to make the medical issue worse. You know, pretty much nothing's going to get better in your body physically if you're stressed out. And then if you're stressed out, you're not gonna get enough sleep. And if you're not getting enough sleep, whatever's going on medically, you're not resting, your body may increase. We talked earlier about the heart um, and how it can, you know, impact your heart. But people with different maladies need rest. So your mental status can impact the sleep which can impact other activities in your body. So how much sleep is enough? And this is just a general chart that we'll quickly talk about. And everybody's 
body is a little different, but there are some things like a newborn baby can actually sleep 14 to 17 hours a day, that three month old, they wake up to eat, poop, pee and go back to sleep. Within the first year, they're up to, um, within the first year, they're up to 12, 15, only 12 to 15 hours. By the time you're school age, nine to 11 hours, teens, eight to 10 hours, and it decreases a young adult, seven to nine hours, down to 65 and over, seven to eight hours. So the, the range is different. You know, I just kind of skipped around looking at some ages, but um, sleep is important, but there are different levels of sleep that we need. And you know your body and yours may, um, you know, it'll, it'll differ, but these are the ranges that it is thought to be healthy. So the older adult, by the time you're over 65, seven to eight hours of sleep, your teenagers, eight to 10 hours of sleep. And if you have a teenager, you know they can sleep that eight to 10 hours. And their rhythm is such that they are, their body clock really does allow them to stay up more at night than in the daytime. So you're like, if they just went to sleep, they'd be more awake at school. But when you look at um, different circadian rhythms and things I've studied, um, and looking at how their body clock works, they're more comfortable. You know, they're up overnight. It drives parents crazy, but that is how it works for them. So now what? You know, I like to tell you about the situation. Then I like to get some solutions, not just like, okay, this is sleep. You told me all the things about sleep and I don't have enough time to sleep. One of the things someone, when I mentioned uh, to someone else that I would be talking about sleep, the first thing they said was, I have a newborn baby. I don't have time to sleep. Um, I don't have time to sleep. I got, I got too much to do. Or someone else said, me? Sleep? What? No, are you crazy? I, I, uh, no, I can't. I can't do it. I just can't do it. I, I got too much going on. Uh, and I'm I'm just stressed anyway. And you really want me to think about sleeping? Ah, well, all of those things are true. So let's look at some things that can enhance the quality of your sleep. First off, before I look at my top 10 list, we're going to just have to think about the fact that you know that sleep is important. And that's what tonight is all about, understanding that this is something you have to do for yourself. So let's look at some things, the top Bs to better sleep. The first one is be realistic about your sleep routine. And by that, I mean, come up with your own routine that works for you. Now, if you have a newborn baby, that's a hard thing to do. But after a while, as they get a little bit older, even when they're in that waking every couple of hours, you have a routine. And maybe it's just adjusting your life. It is hard adjusting a life with a newborn. If it's your first child, you have no clue. You're all over the place. But um, develop that pattern that works for you that's going to give you enough sleep. There is no magic um, routine. It is what fits with your life. The next thing is be comfortable. Make your bedroom comfortable. Make your bedroom your sanctuary. Maintain a good temperature when you go to sleep and what's good for you. Some people like it really warm. Some people like it really cold. There is no perfect temperature. It's what works for you. What makes you comfortable? But uh, think about the light. Think about your mattress, your pillows, your sheets. Yes, even your sheets. Um, can make a difference in how you sleep. I have my favorite set of sheets. And when I put them on, the one bad thing about it, I don't want to get up because they are, they just, they feel so good. They're just, oh, awesome. Um, now I've heard someone just said, and when in terms of sleep, they would love to get eight or seven or eight hours of sleep. They get five or six. And it's because of chronic pain. So there are things that interfere with your sleep. We're gonna talk about napping in a minute. Be aware of the blue light. What are the blue light? When you look at your phone at night, your tablet, your TV, it emits blue light. And when you can reduce your blue light exposure, it can impact your sleep. So what 
I have understood is that that particular light band and the way it impacts your brain waves can keep you awake longer. It can impact your sleep cycle. So put a, some people say they have a screen band. I'm not gonna have on any television, computer, phone, or tablet, or any of that in my bedroom. It's my sanctuary. I don't want it. Others, but I want to watch TV before I go to bed. I need to watch that to calm down and de-stress. And if that is you, then at least turn it off. It is better to turn it off than to go to sleep with the TV on. Or some TVs have a blue light filter. Some phones have a blue light filter. So monitor that blue light. Do what you can to monitor that light um, so that you are making things better for yourself. Be very aware of food and drink. We talked about alcohol and how alcohol can really impact your sleep. That's not the only thing. Food can also have a big impact on how you, how you sleep. What are you eating? Are you eating heavy foods late at night, 30 minutes before you lay down? Not a good thing uh, for some people. And some people have issues, physiological issues that they don't really know what they are, but they know, man, if I, if I do eat too much too late, oh yeah, I, I have indigestion or I just can't sleep. Some people have um, issues with acid reflux. Um, some people have just different medical issues where we talked about IBS, irritable bowel syndrome earlier. You don't need to eat late. And there are certain foods you don't need to eat, period, because they're going to give you indigestion and you just won't get a good night's sleep even if you eat them. So being aware of your diet, um, food and drink. The other thing about drink, not just alcohol, maybe if you, you need to get X amount of um, ounces of water per day. And I work hard at it, not at my maximum yet. But drinking, you know, that 32 ounce bottle of water right before you go to bed because you didn't get enough water in, it's going to make you have to wake up and go to the bed. Well, that's not the best thing to do to keep your sleep waking up. So you look at reducing your intake of food and drink uh, before you go to bed. And depending on, as I said, what's going on medically will impact how, you know, how far you have to do it. The other thing is be tobacco free. Tobacco can, there's nothing good about tobacco. It can impact your sleep, I was going to say, but there's just nothing good it does for your body. But yes, it can impact your sleep as well. Be active. Believe it or not, um, exercise during the day can help you. Um, you don't want to necessarily exercise right before you go to sleep because, um, you know, your body's revved up. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do a 30-minute workout and you go lay down to sleep. Your body has to calm down, so it might not be ready to go right to sleep. But being more active in the day does a lot. We're not going to go through all of what it does for your body, other than just losing weight. But you know, your heart is working better, and so many things are going on um, that can impact how you sleep. So get some exercise. Um, I see lots of people in the chat are saying I, it moves. I can see some of it. I have somebody said I'm sleepy earlier. Somebody said they're headed to bed shortly. That's a good thing. What about taking a nap? Be a light napper. By that, I mean, don't take too many naps during the day. If you're taking naps during the day, your body's only going to sleep so many hours. And if you spend half of them sleep during the day, it might be harder for you to sleep um, at night. Now, I know there have been times where I maybe couldn't sleep well at night and it was like, I've got to go get a nap. Or I may have two or three clients that were just difficult and it was draining and I didn't get enough sleep and I've had to go take a 30 minute nap to get through the next two or three clients. Uh, so sometimes we might need a nap, but don't sleep too much during the day so that you can sleep at night. Be relaxed. What do you mean be relaxed? clear your mind in the evening. You can, some people like taking a long hot shower or sitting in a, in a warm bath with lavender or their favorite smell. Be relaxed. That is one of the biggest killers of sleep. You know, that's, you're in that stress zone. I just can't relax. So what I've worked with some people to really help them get a better quality of sleep, some of the things that have proven helpful 
um, was going through relaxation at night, doing that full body relaxation, allowing yourself to feel relaxed from head to toe or toe to head, and you focus on each part of your body being relaxed. The deep breathing we do in the beginning, doing maybe five or six deep breaths, laying still, and as you're breathing in, imagining your body relaxing, becoming relaxed from toe to head, higher and higher with each breath you take. And by the time you get to your head, your whole body and mind are clear and you're relaxed and it allows you to fall asleep. So be relaxed and, and relaxing is so important. Be health conscious. Make sure there are no underlying issues with your body that's keeping you from falling asleep. Many people have sleep apnea and have been diagnosed and ignore it. Many people may have sleep apnea and may not know it. Many people may have reflux, acid reflux, and that impacts your sleep and how you sleep and may not know it. And other health issues you may have can impact your quality of sleep and your ability to sleep. So be health conscious. If you are having sleep issues, talk to your doctor. If you have the ability to go to a doctor, talk to your doctor and say, you know, I just can't sleep. And they may look at what's going on with you and under, and you may find out that your inability to sleep is related to a health issue that could be addressed and then your sleep could improve. And the last thing is be aware of your stress and be aware of ways to, and develop ways to help your stress. Stress is a killer. And when I say that, I mean it literally. Whatever health issues you may have, Stress will make it worse. Uh, it does so many things to your body. We've talked about it before and we'll probably talk about it again. But stress does so much to your body. Be aware of your stress so that you can manage your stress. When it comes to negative emotions, I always say if they're yours, own them. And the reason why I say own them, if I own my depression, I own my anxiety, I own my stress, then it's mine, I own it, I can work on it. I can work on making it disappear. So figure out your stress, own it, work to make it disappear. Ah, all that, so I hope um, tonight you'll be able to get some good sleep. Um, if you can't, try that relaxation. Take some deep breaths, about five or six of them. There are tons of things on YouTube that you can listen to that, you know, nature sounds, rain, relaxing music, they can help do that. Take off that blue screen on the TV, phone, whatever. And you can use your phone to listen to the sounds on YouTube without having the light on but find ways to de-stress. So here's our call to action for this week. Remember the importance of sleep. Even if you're in a situation that's hard to get sleep, focus on the fact that it is important and make it a priority. If you're the one with you're a couple, for instance, with a new baby, maybe you have to take time. Okay, you get some sleep, good sleep tonight. I'll get it tomorrow. Maybe you have to trade off, but find something to balance in your life so that you can know that Sleep is important. If it's necessary, if necessary, work to improve the quality and amount of sleep you're getting. Some of you get great sleep, but study after study says a lot of you don't. Um, someone said there's a calm app. Biofeedback is good. That's breathing, um, and it starts with that breathing. Um, so improve what, do what it takes to improve the quality of sleep. There are a lot of free apps and free things you can do just to assist in sleep. And I always end with these two, stay politically aware. That it speaks for itself. You know, we're always need to be aware of the next election cycle and what's going on to interfere with it. We're still in a time where we need to wear our masks. Whether you choose to get vaccinated or not, you still need to wear a mask. Whether you have been vaccinated or not, mask up because wearing is caring. Well, I am Bronwyn Lucas with ABLE Counseling and Consulting where we affirm, build, lead, and empower you. If you are finding yourself stressed out, depressed, suffering from any mental health issues, and are in need of a counselor and you're in the state of Texas, reach out. 
My number is 682-272-3949. I'm also a life coach and a certified Christian counselor. So reach out. And I always want to remind you that mental health is health. So everything that impacts you, impacts your mental health. So here's to you and have a good mentally healthy week. And I'll see you next week.